Hello everybody, happy Wednesday morning, hope yours is going well, and today we have an unplanned Seahawks video to get to. No intro for this video because we just had some breaking news and I want to get right to it. The Seattle Seahawks have made their trade. Maybe not the only trade they're going to make, but they have made the trade. As of a couple hours ago, the Cincinnati Bengals trade Carlos Dunlap to Seattle Seahawks, sources says. This is from ESPN and Adam Schefter. So if you scroll down in this article a little bit, veteran defensive end Carlos Dunlap has been traded to the Seattle Seahawks for offensive lineman B.J. Finney and a seventh round pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, a source told ESPN's Adam Schefter on Wednesday. The move will become official on 4 p.m. ET Wednesday, which is in less than two hours as of this recording. So, we did it. We made a trade. We made the trade. It's not guaranteed to be the only trade we make. It's not guaranteed to be able to fix the problem by itself. But one thing we can no longer say, whatever we do for the rest of this season, you cannot say the team did not try. The team saw the problem, they saw what cost them the game against Arizona in large part, and they went, let's go get somebody else. And to anybody in my chat recently, we were talking about the Dunlap trade, and people were saying, should we give up our fourth round pick? Should we give up a second round pick for Dunlap? Do we have to give up a fourth round pick in David Moore? B.J. Finney, who was basically completely useless to us because he couldn't even get on the field when somebody got hurt, Big disappointment B.J. Finney was, and a seventh round pick that will probably be one of the 10 or 15 last picks in the draft. They gave him away, and part of that's on Dunlap and his behavior recently demanding out of Cincinnati, but the point is, the Cincinnati Bengals gave this dude away, and this is a long-time veteran. This is a Bengals legend of sorts. He's the Bengals career sack leader, as this article notes. So, what do we know about Carlos Dunlap? So, let's take a look at his stats. If you take a look at it from an above, a you know high above view, you can see that he made the Pro Bowl twice in 2015 and 2016. He's no longer the same player. If you look at what he's done recently, in 2018, he had eight sacks. In 2019, he only played 14 games and still had nine sacks. Um, across the two seasons, he has 110 total tackles, 21 tackles for loss, 42 total QB hits. So over the last two years, been very productive. Now in 2020 so far, he hasn't even started all the games. He's only started half the games about. Um, he's only got one sack, 18 tackles, two tackles for loss, four QB hits. So his production has dropped so far in 2020 has to be remembered the Bengals are, once again, a terrible team. It's a little harder for pass rushers to eat when they're playing on this terrible team. But let's drill down a little bit more into his production recently. Let's go down here to his advanced metrics from the last couple years. In 2018, in all 16 games, he had 38 QB pressures. 38 QB pressures, that's more than two a game. In 2019, he played 14 games and had 32 QB pressures, which is roughly about the same pace. So a little more than two a game. So far this year in seven games, he only has seven pressures. So that's one a game. So age may be catching up to him. He was also playing a little bit less too. We can uh, scroll down here. We can take a look at his snap counts. You can see his play time dropped from above and around 70% these two years to about 59%, not even 60% in 2020. So... They weren't playing him as much. They clearly wanted to feature some younger players on that Bengals team, which makes all the sense in the world. That's part of the reason why they're giving him away. But as you can see, no matter how you slice it, he may be dropping off a little bit from what he was even last year. And last year, he was a very good player. But given what we gave up to get him, a seventh-round pick and a player that has no use for us, I think we can safely say this was a good, successful trade the Bengals essentially gave him away just so they wouldn't have to pay him. So speaking of that part of it, let's go over and look at Carlos Dunlap's contract now that he's been traded to the Seahawks. So as you can see, he was making a lot of money with the Bengals, but um, the trade to the Seahawks has introduced some new aspects to this contract. So 
it looks like, according to Spotrack, and uh, let's zoom in here a little bit so you guys can get a little bit of a better view at this. It, according to Spotrack, the amount of money we have to pay him for the remainder of the 2020 season is less than $5 million. He obviously was making more money this year, but the Bengals had to pay him that money for the first part of the season and roster bonuses and, and things like that. So we are only on the hook for less than $5 million, about $4.9 million in 2020. So not that expensive, very easy to work into the cap. Any GM worth his salt should be able to work this in. Now, in 2021, he is due 11 million plus, which this will be a problem because we don't know what we're going to do with uh, certain players who are coming, who may be becoming free agents, like Shaq. I I'm pretty much done with Shaq at this point, but you never know what he's going to do in the last 10 games of the season. He might suddenly become Deion Sanders. So this number is a problem, but according to Spotrack, it seems like we can cut him with no dead cap next off season and this is a very strong possibility because he's going to be making a lot of money as a 32 year old pass rusher who's already showing some signs of decline and if we can get away with cutting him with his zero dead cap which according to Spotrack that's what he has that's very likely going to happen so we've essentially just made a trade with no downside if Carlos Dunlap is good then he's good and if he's not good, then we have to pay him for, you know, he he's counts less than $5 million against the cap this year, and we can just cut him with no dead cap in 2021. So, successful trade for the Seahawks. We gave up nothing of real value, and we got back a player who could come in and help us a decent amount. Now, is this going to save us? Is this going to fix the problem? By itself, probably not, but we are getting Rasheem Green back, and you guys know I was thinking Rasheem Green was going to have a 2020 breakout season, and then he got hurt, so maybe he can become that breakout star after he comes back, hopefully this week, but almost certainly against Buffalo if not. Um, Alton Robinson is a rookie. Maybe he can pick up some stuff as the season goes on and start having a contribution again because the last couple weeks he's been very quiet. Uh, maybe Daryl Taylor comes around in December and actually does something for us. This by itself can't save us, but reinforcements are coming, and we have no guarantee this is the final trade we're going to make. You know, Houston still looks like they're going to dangle J.J. Watt out there or Jacob Martin. There's still Alden Smith on the Cowboys. Cowboys should be looking to give him away just so they don't have to pay him. There's still stuff that can happen, guys, but today, I think... Whatever you may think of Carlos Dunlap, whatever you may think of this team, I don't see any reason to be upset about what just happened today. We got a good player for practically nothing with very little salary cap related risk. So I'm happy. We'll see if he plays this weekend. We know he's at least going to play against Buffalo if not, but I'm going to go ahead and call that a video and get out of here. There will be another video later today, another double upload day. I'm spoiling you guys. There will be a Wagner Watch video coming out later today, and there will be a video game stream later tonight, so come tune in, please. Peace out, go Hawks, and I think we made a good trade today. No risk, potentially pretty high reward. Peace out.